Um, I'm planning today to go through some of the translation features on the new Cochrane library. Some of you uh, may have already had a look at it. Um, it's currently available in beta stage, which means it's still under development. So I'll go through some of the features that are already available that you can access already and can also talk a bit about what will still be added. Um, and the, the second part of the meeting, I will be answering MemSource questions, or I can also show some um, additional features, depending on what you're interested in. OK, so I think you should all be seeing my screen now with the home page of the Beta Cochrane Library. Um, if you haven't seen it at all, um, perhaps the home page doesn't look too unfamiliar. Um, it's similar to, to the current Cochrane Library. And um, you can see, though, that there is a notice on top of the page that tells you that this is a preview and that it's still under development. So the URL, if you haven't seen it, is betacochranelibrary.com. And that's available to anyone to access and have a look around. Um, it includes all reviews and translations that are published. So the data that you will find here should be the same than the data on the uh, live Cochrane library. OK, so I won't spend too much time on the home page because, as I said, it looks similar. You have uh, some highlighted topics on the top with the images and some highlighted reviews. And at the bottom, you also have the browse by topic option. But I'll start with um, running a search. So for example, I'll search for asthma. OK, so now it starts to look very different. If you haven't looked at this before, um, that's very different to the current Cochrane library already. Um, you can see there are 262 results for reviews matching the term asthma that I've been searching for in the title abstract keyword sections. Um, but you can also see that there's additional tabs available here. So. Um, you can see a tab called Reviews in Progress, which are the protocols. You can see Trials, which is the central database. Um, you can see editorials of the Cochrane Library, Special Collections, Cochrane Clinical Answers. And here under the More tab, you also have access to Epistemonicus. So in the new Cochrane Library, when you search for a term with the basic search, you can search across all of these different sets of content at the same time and then switch to them. You can also see on the left hand side here, you have filter options available right there. So um, after you've run a search, you can combine it directly with any of these filters. Um, that includes the publication dates, of the reviews in this case. So the filters are not exactly the same across the different tabs. Um, that depends on what information is available. But for the reviews, you have the publication date, the, um, the status, so conclusions change, new search, you can see here for the asthma results. And you have a language filter as well. So this is um, a completely new feature that we have introduced to make it easier to find translations in different languages of the reviews. So if you've run a search in English in this case, you then have the option to see how many of your results have a translation in a given language. Um, by default, the languages will be listed by the number of results. So you can see that 
um, the asthma reviews with the most translations are um, Spanish, Espanol, and then we have French, and so the list goes down here. And um, if I was to click on uh, Espanol here now, the filter would be applied so that I only see the asthma reviews that actually have a Spanish translation. So this can help you find results in your language or that you have translated. Um, but of course, it does mean you can see the difference um, of the 262 reviews that have asthma in their results, uh, in their text, um, only a subset has a Spanish translation. So, of course, when you apply a language filter, the result set becomes smaller depending on what has been translated in that particular language. And you can turn the filter off again by clicking on the X here, and then the results are reset to the whole set of asthma reviews that could be found, that were found. So let's have a look at one of the results of at one of the reviews. So I'll open the yoga for asthma review. And um, now you can uh, already see the result in Spanish. Um, that was not very well planned from my side because I actually looked at the at the Spanish reviews before. So the website has remembered my choice um, that I prefer to see reviews in Spanish. If you access the website for the first time, you would see the review in English, of course, to start with. So let's go back to that view. And then for each section that has a translation, you will see these language switches. So that may look a bit familiar. We've already have, we already have that in the current Cochrane library. They look a bit different, um, but you will find those again for all the 14 languages that we translate into at the moment. So you have them here next to the abstract. And if you go down to the plain language summary, you also have them here. And because more, more of our languages translate the plain language summary only, you see the list is longer here. Um, we've changed the language switch to display in native language. So you don't see the language names in English anymore. They're now displayed in whatever the language name is in your own language. Um, so then to see one of the translations, you just click on the language. So if I click on Espanol, we get to the Spanish translation. Um, and you can also see at the side here now in the article navigation, you see some ES labels. So that is visible here to try and help you see which sections of the review are actually available in the language that you have selected. Um, for Spanish, we do have some reviews that have um, some of the main text sections translated as well. So there you can see that uh, even the background objectives, methods and discussion sections are available in Spanish in this case. Um, in most cases, in the other languages, it will usually be the plain language summary and the abstract. So if I go to French here, for example, you can see that we have an FR for French label next to the abstract and the plain language summary. And then I can also click on the navigation of the article here to jump directly to the plain language summary in that case and in French. Um, something that is also new here um, is 
maybe not very obvious to the user at first, but going forward, we will have distinct URLs for each language that a review is available in. So I am currently looking at the French translation and um, I'm not sure if that's big enough for you to see, but in the URL here on top, you have FR in the URL. And if I change to Spanish, it would be ES. If I change to uh, Japanese, it would be JA and so on. So that means that going forward, you will be able to link directly to the translation in your language when you disseminate your translations on the Cochrane library. So this was not possible um, before, only on Cochrane.org actually. But going forward, you can, when you, for example, post new translations on social media or elsewhere or in newsletters, you can give people directly the links to the translation in your language. Okay, um, do we have any questions up until here? No, okay. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, um, although I think probably most of you actually have seen the site before, um, but what is not here at the moment are the translation notes. So the notes where uh, you as translation teams can indicate who is responsible for the translation. Um, they used to be underneath each abstract and each plain language summary, but we have taken them out of there and going forward, they will be directly in the right-hand navigation. So this is an example of something that hasn't been uh, finished yet, but it will be uh, available soon. So directly here in the menu, there will be an option uh, or a link called translation notes. And if you click on that, then a pop-up opens with the translation notes. We have made that change. Um, firstly, I think it is more visible actually in the navigation. So that gives you a bit more prominence. Um, but also with the introduction of the Spanish translations in the Cochrane Library, and some of them having many sections translated, it didn't seem like a very good solution to have the notes underneath each translated section. So that was um, the reason to move them to the right-hand navigation. Okay, so that was an English search for a topic and then we can filter or navigate to the review to see the translations. Um, something new that we've also introduced is that you can, going forward, also search in the language of your translations. So um, we have implemented a multi-language search that searches across all content in all languages. Um, that means um, if there are translations in French or Spanish that have a certain word in their in their text, then we are able to retrieve that result as well. Um, so if we stick to the asthma example here, let's do a search for the Spanish term asthma. So I'll type that here on top and run a search. Okay, so a search for asthma returns 218 results. And if you now look at the language filter, you actually see that only 202 of them have a Spanish translation. So how is that possible? Um, as I've explained, the search is running across all languages and asthma is an example of a term that is actually the same translation in, um, 
in Bahasa Malaysia, so Malay, also uses the word asthma um, and Portuguese as well, for example, uses the term asthma. It's written in the same way as the Spanish term. And therefore, in this case, we get a mix of results in different languages, not just um, not just the Spanish ones. But if you have terms that you're searching for that are distinct and unique in your language, then of course, if you run a search in your language, you would only find reviews with that particular result. So in this case, though, if I really only want to see ASMA results, in uh, Spanish, I could filter for Spanish again. And then click on the results that interest me. So let's just take the first one here. And uh, now you see again what I uh, accidentally already showed in the previous search. Um, the website remembers that I looked at Spanish before, so it assumes that I am interested in seeing Spanish content and shows me the result in Spanish when I go to the review. So we're making assumptions here about what users want, but um, we assume that if you're someone who looks at a review in a certain language, then you're, you probably want to see reviews in that language going forward as well. Um, if that's not the case, then of course here at this point, you can then change back to a different language again and see the review in English, for example. Okay, um, any questions up until here? No? Um, something that is also available here that uh, is new is that we are integrating the podcasts as related content in the right hand article navigation. So you can see here it says podcast available. If you click on that. It jumps to uh, the related section in general. So you have related reviews here, which is based on similar topics, for example. And then here you have um, also related podcast, you can jump down to that. And um, that is basically just um, then taking you to a separate page where you can listen to the podcast or you can also go to Cochrane.org to listen to it where we usually publish them to start with. Okay, do I think that's what most of what I wanted to show you on the Cochrane Library. Do you have any questions? Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Um, in that case, um, I think I'll just say, please have a look yourself as well if you haven't yet. Um, and if you have any questions or feedback, you can of course contact me or we also have a feedback form up here. And um, there you can also submit feedback directly. Um, 
I, do, I actually do realize now that I did not mention at all the Spanish portal that will be available, which is quite a big change, actually. So I should probably talk a bit about that before we move on to MemSource. Um, you probably noticed that there is a, an English tab here on top of the page. So if you click on that, you will see English and Spanish as options. So our translation activities, um, as you know, are to some extent limited because of the capacity that our teams have. And um, some languages, we have a lot of activity, other languages, not so much. And in some languages, we have maybe only two or 300 translations at this point, and others, we have thousands of translations of reviews. So we were trying to find an approach with the website that um, allows us to um, facilitate the publication of both those scenarios and to have sort of a scalable solution. So the scalable uh, version would then be that a uh, language actually has their own version of the Cochrane Library. So for the launch of the website, we're implementing that only for Spanish to start with because it's new for us as well and um, it requires a lot more resources from the team than, um, than Cochrane.org, for example. So we're starting off with Spanish and um, what you will see if you look at the Spanish version is basically an exact copy as it should be of the English version and um, the navigation and the content will be translated as much as possible. So you can see if I switch then um, the content, the navigation of the website is, is all in Spanish. That has already been translated by our team in Barcelona. And, um, and um, yeah, the search is, of course, working in Spanish as well. So um, the user experience for Spanish speakers will be a lot better than it used to be, of course. Um, and we've integrated the existing separate Bibliotheca Plus into the new Cochrane Library, basically, so that we can, going forward, offer one big joint platform um, for all users. Um, the limitation of this is, though, that not all the content will be available in Spanish. Um, for example, at the moment, we're not translating protocols. So if you have the search results here, the protocols results are zero because no Spanish protocols are available. And um, also, centr the central database is mostly in English. There are some non-English results. You can see there are some here as well, but uh, the majority of the uh, of the data included in Central is in English. So there are some limitations to that, but we're making available as much as possible in Spanish. And um, that also means for all the other languages that we currently have translations in, there is a prospect in the future if there's enough capacity and content available to add an entire portal in that language here as well. But for the moment, we're doing that only for Spanish and English. OK. Any questions now? or anything to add, perhaps. I see Andrea is on the call, so she's been leading the translation side of things uh, from the Spanish team. Perhaps, am I missing something? Do you want to add anything, Andrea? Okay, Andrea says her microphone is not working. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. So Andrea says it's very exciting. I think she's right. I mean, I've been working on this project for a long time, so it's um, 
um, you don't really see the excitement anymore so much all the time. But uh, you're right, it's, it is very exciting. It's a huge step forward for us. And um, of course, things could always uh, be even better. And we will continue to, um, to develop the website, of course. So even after launch, there will be more developments done and functionality added. But um, it is a big step that we're bringing together the Spanish uh, Biblioteca Plus and the English Cochrane Library into one website. And um, I'm also very, very pleased that we've been able to improve the, um, the accessibility of and discoverability for translations um, with this new version of the Cochrane Library. Thanks a lot, Andrea. Okay, so yeah, I, as I mentioned, please have a look around and tell your colleagues, tell your networks to have a look around as well. We're very happy to receive feedback. So um, please do let us know what you think. And um, yeah, and in hopefully a few weeks time, um, this will become the live Cochrane Library as well then and replace the current version. Okay, um, with that, I would move over to MemSource. I'll just make that bigger here. Okay. Um, this was meant as a question and answer session. Um, now we don't have a lot of MemSource users on the call, so I'm not sure if there are any specific questions that I can answer. If you have questions, please just turn on your microphone or, or post into the chat box. No questions from Andrea. Okay. Um, I can show a few things and perhaps talk about also how Archie is connected with MemSource and Cochrane account is connected with MemSource. Um, it may be a bit of repetition for Ya Yuan, but um, <clears throat> maybe it will be useful for people who also watch the recording later. Um, so firstly, um, as you know, Archie is where we store all the reviews and all the translation documents as well. So translation documents are, are linked to the corresponding review version. And whenever a review is published, whether it's a new review or an update, we create a new project on MemSource so that you always have the latest version available on MemSource. So if a review gets published today, uh, a few instances later, we will have the project available here um, on, the webs uh, on the list of projects for your language as, as well. Um, here I'm logged in as a German project manager. So that's why you can see only German projects in this list. Um, you can also see here that there's quite a few that were created just shortly after another yesterday morning. Um, those were not all reviews that Claudia actually um, received for German at that moment, but um, because we have not added all reviews into your list of projects,
that were published before April, there is an option available in Archie to send a review for translation to create a project on MemSource. So everything, all reviews that have been published since April are automatically added to your list of projects. But for the backlog of reviews that were published before April 2018, there is an option for you to add those projects to MemSource. And I will show you how you can do that. So in Archie, you can run a quick search for a specific review. So uh, the review that you want to translate. So you can search for a CD number, for example, let's take this one. And then you click on the document search button here. And you see two results in the list. So the first, uh, the one at the bottom here is the review. You can recognize that with the blue R. And it also says it's an intervention review. Um, you, if you run a quick search like that with the CD number, you also get all results uh, of translations that are available. Um, so in this case, there's only a Spanish translation. Um, to add this review to MemSource, you can then right click on the review and you'll see an option called Translate Into. And then you can select your language. So I would select German in this case. Um, I won't do it now, but if I click on German here, that would send uh, this review to MemSource for me to translate in German. And you have access to this functionality if you are a project manager for your language. And then you also only see that language that you're a project manager for. So um, I see all the languages because I can access everything in Archie for the translation teams. But um, for example, um, Andrea would only be able to see Spanish or Ya Yuan would only be able to see traditional Chinese. So that way you can send the English review text to MemSource and start working on it. And um, it can take maybe a couple of minutes until the project is created on MemSource, but that way you can add reviews that are not listed yet in your list of projects. And when you publish a translation on MemSource, you can also use this quick search with the CD number to see whether the publication was actually successful. So a few seconds really after you mark a job as completed on MemSource, the translation should be available in Archie. If it's not, then there is probably some kind of issue. And um, you can also see the publication status of a translation if you, if you open it. So if we just look at the Spanish one here, for example, you double click to open it and then you have a history tab which shows you the publication history. So in this case, there was uh, the, the current version was published on the 20th of April. So if you publish a translation, you can always check whether everything looks okay in Archie to make sure that, um, that there was no problem with your translation. Okay, so that's how reviews are linking in with Archie and MemSource. Um, we have also integrated Cochrane account with MemSource. So you know when you uh, log in, you log in with your Cochrane account. And we are assigning specific roles to all translators and all translation managers to determine their roles and permissions on MemSource as well. 
So in Archie, you have access to your translation project folder. So you can access that under resources, translation projects, and then you'll find your language. So if I go to German, for example, um, you usually have a translations folder. So that's where you could access all your translations that have been published and they're sorted by review group. And in the people folder, you have three different categories. The first one is managing translator. So anyone in your translation project with a managing translator role will be able to access MemSource as a project manager as well. So that's how we determine that. In this case, we only have uh, one German manager for MemSource. And um, under translator, you have all the translators of your project that um, have access or permissions or a role as translator in MemSource as well after they've logged in for the first time. So the list, the people that are listed here are um, all the people that used to have a Smartling account as translator for your language and all the people that um, that signed up as translators through Join Cochrane and that passed the translation test. And going forward as well, if someone signs up as volunteer translator and they pass the test, we give them this role in Archie. So afterwards, they will then be able to log in to MemSource as translator for your particular language. Any questions related to this? Uh, Juliana, hi, it's Denise here. Hi. I've got a couple of questions, if that's yes, all right. Yes, please, of course. Um, firstly, with this um, uh, thing on Archie where you can um, click down to uh, the option to get something translated, is it only the translation managers that can do that or could an ME use that option to request a translation? Only managing translators can do that. Um, maybe the language is a bit confusing. It says translate into as if you could yeah. request a translation, yeah. um, but that's not how it works, no. Um, and there's no okay. notifications linked to it. So even if uh, right. someone does that, who is not the project manager of the language team, then they wouldn't necessarily no. know. Nobody will know. Yeah, because it, <laughs> okay. it will just get added to their list, but there are so many reviews in their list that they wouldn't yeah. necessarily know why this is listed there or even notice that there's an, okay. uh, a review listed that is not published recently, yeah. So Fantastic. that's not what um, it's for. Question, <laughs> right. The other question I had was um, looking at this list you have um, on the screen now, mm -hmm. um, lots of the translators are still uh, showing a primary group as a membership project. Mm -hmm. um, do they need reassigning to um, the German translation project, for example? Um, no, I don't think that's necessary because no. okay. they don't. So with that, we really only use that translator role to determine their access to MemSource. And it okay. doesn't necessarily mean that they have an Archie account, actually, because they don't need right. it. It's just an Archie record, unless, of yeah. course, they have other roles. So for example, um, we have Cordula Brown, Brown here. She's also mm -hmm. a review author of the bone joint and muscle trauma group. So that's different. Yeah. She has an Archie yeah. account, and the, the bone joint and muscle trauma group is her primary group. Um, but yeah, as you say, there's a lot of people here that have membership project as the primary group. Um, mm. But yeah, they don't need their their Archie account to do anything. So for us, okay. it's really just a way to determine their um, access to MemSource. 
and actually also to determine their access to the online learning modules. So people who have a translator role in Archie will also have free access to the online learning modules. Okay. So we're really just using it for permissions, not to, um, yeah. not for Archie access in that sense. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for those questions. Okay. Um, I'll quickly move over to MemSource as well. Um, and let's perhaps have a bit of a look at the list of users in here. So, as I mentioned, I'm logged in as a German project manager and um, I was only able to see German projects, but actually when you look at the list of users, you can see that there are users from many different languages. So we have um, traditional Chinese here, German, Malay, Thai, Polish, Thai, and the list goes on. So unfortunately at the moment we are not able to limit the users list for you so that you only see the users of your own language. Um, that's something we have asked MemSource about and they have it on their list to look into that and hopefully adapt it but at the moment we are not able to limit that. So just be aware that you are able to potentially edit all the users here. Um, and I would ask you to not do that unless they're your own users and you need to do that for some reason. Um, so yeah, just a, a note of caution not to mess around too much with that. Um, also because of the way we have set up access to MemSource uh, through Cochrane account, um, it actually means that you don't really need to manage users um, in any way and also the users themselves don't need to do that. Um, even more so, it's actually the case that if you were to change the email address of a user here, when they log in the next time, we would update it again with whatever is in Archie or in their Cochrane account. So it actually doesn't have any effect if you change the last name or first name or email because every time someone logs in again, we overwrite it with the information in Archie. So that means if a user does need to have the email address updated, it should be changed in their Cochrane account and not in MemSource. If they change it in their Cochrane account, the next time they log into MemSource, it will also be updated in their MemSource account. So that's probably just an important note to understand that the information you see in MemSource about users is largely determined through whatever is in people's Cochrane accounts. Um, there is one reason why you might want to um, edit some of the translation users. So um, I think those of you who have used it know that um, translation or translators or editors has, have a role as linguist. And then we have project managers. So those are the two main roles. Um, everyone with a translator role in Archie can log in as a linguist. And by default, they only have access to the translation step of the workflow. Um, you can see the workflow listed here in this column. So most of the linguists only have a T here, which stands for translation. Um, we have a project manager here who has access also to editing for E and FR for final review. Um, we have one linguist here who also has access to editing. So by default, the linguists only have access to the translation step, but if you have a translator that should also be an editor, 
you can give them those permissions. And that would be the, the one reason really why you would want to edit a user on MemSource. That's something you can change and that's something that we don't override when they log in again through their Cochrane account. So to do that, um, you need to find the user first, of course. So for example, you can run a, a filter search here if you click on that filter button. And then you can search for their email address or their first name, last name. So if I use the first one here, for example, click OK. Then you only see the person that you're looking for. Um, you can edit them either by selecting them and then click on edit, or you can also open their uh, profile if you click on their last name. And then you have an edit option here. And if you scroll down, there's a relevancy section. You can click on that to open it. And at the very bottom of that, you see the relevant workflow steps. So here is where you can add the editing step and click on save if this person should also have access to edit translations. I won't save it now because I don't think this person should be an editor, but that's how you can do it. Um, some of the teams that I showed this to were then asking, what's the editing two step? Um, so I think except for German, all teams have a workflow with three steps, which is translation, editing, and final review. But the German team are actually using a second editing step. So that's why this is available here. I can't hide it from the other languages, um, but yeah, so just so you know that editing two is a step that's uh, used by the German team. If you accidentally select it, it doesn't really matter. Nothing will happen because you don't have that step in your workflow, but that's why it's there. Okay, any questions about users or user management in MemSource? No? Okay, um, I'll show you one last thing in the editor, which I'm not sure everyone has seen yet. Um, so let's open just one of the German projects here. We have the job in this project. So I click on the file to open it. And we have the editor opening here. So um, I don't even really want to show you anything about how to translate, but just so you're aware that under tools, you have an option to set preferences. So if you do that, these are preferences for only your own account. So if you change any of that, it only applies to you, not to your translators um, or your other colleagues that work on MemSource. Um, you have a few options here. So the first tab under CAT tool, you have an option to determine the minimum match rate that you want to see in MemSource. By default, MemSource only shows you translation memory matches that are at least 60% the same of what you'd previously translated. So that's what is here by default. You see that I have actually set it to 40 for myself. So the lower this number, the more matches you will see, but they're also, of course, less relevant. Um, then you can also select what you want to happen when you confirm a segment. Do you want to jump to the next segment or the next unconfirmed segment? 
Um, and you have a few options of what should happen in related to pre-translation. So I think most of you will have noticed that um, by default, MemSource um, fills in repetitions automatically. So if you have the same sentence twice in a document, then it's filled in automatically. But if you don't want that, you could turn it off here. And um, you can also say what you want to happen in terms of pre-translation after you jump to a next segment. Um, you have some more options here. Under appearance, you have some options to change the font size in the editor. Um, by default, the panel font size is quite small. I think it's 11 as well. So you can see I have made that higher font size, so it's a bit bigger. So you can also adapt that for yourself here. And finally, under miscellaneous, they have um, they you can disable the autocomplete. So I'm not sure if you've all noticed that, but when you type in MemSource, um, you get suggestions on how your word might end and you can then select it. But if you don't like that, you can turn it off here as well. So that's some uh, personal preferences that you can um, set for your own account in MemSource editors. OK. So I don't want to hold you all up too long, particularly if there are no questions. Um, so last call for questions now. Does anyone have anything to ask about MemSource or otherwise? Okay, it doesn't look like it. So in that case, thank you very much for joining the meeting today. I will um, share the recording of the meeting in the next translation update, which will probably go out tomorrow. Um, so you'll have that, or if some of your colleagues need it, you'll, they can see, uh, still watch it there. And of course, um, if you have any questions or any feedback, both about the new Cochrane library or MemSource, please let me know and um, we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, then have a good day or evening, everyone. And um, I'm sure I'll talk to most of you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Denise.